Welcome to Being a Successful Leader with Carl Welty. Carl is a leadership pioneer with years of challenging leadership and consulting experience. Here's Carl with some valuable insights, practical and proven methods for being a successful leader. Uh, greetings, Carl Welty, your host here for the podcast series, Being a Successful Leader. 26 episodes, each one running 15 to uh, minutes to 30 minutes, and the 26 episodes are built around, revolve around three leadership imperatives I have for successful leadership. The first is being a skillful, uh, self-aware leader. It all starts with uh, the leader. Uh, the second then is to the leader having to have a a sound strategy, uh, formulating and executing a sound strategy. You need to have a, a shared aspirations about what we're all about, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. And then the third is that you need people to rally around the shared aspirations, a culture of commitment. Those, those are the three. Right now, we're working on the uh, second one, uh, the one of building a sound strategy. And uh, the topic today is uh, clarifying core values. Uh, but before we get started on that, uh, you can um, look at any of the previous episodes by going to my website, wealthy.com, and clicking on leadership resources. And you'll find one of the resources there is the uh, all the uh, webcasts up to now. And the uh, the host is uh, webtalkradio.net. And you just click on whatever episode you want to listen to and bingo, it's right there. And also, if you want to re-listen to anything that we've talked about. The second uh, resource for you there is uh, my books. And the book that uh, parallels what we're talking about here is the book called uh, Making and Fulfilling Your Dreams as a Leader. And it really outlines the uh, strategic framework I have, which we're talking about, and how to go about this, uh, developing a sound strategy and executing such a sound strategy. So I recommend that to you. You'll find the three providers there, the uh, uh, three providers of the books, uh, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and the uh, Owings Publishing, the publisher of the book. And you just click on whatever outlet you want to use and takes you right to the page to order. Okay, let's get going with today's topic, clarifying core values. What we're doing is we're working around my model of a strategic framework. And there are three dimensions. The first one is identity, which is uh, what we, uh, why we exist, our purpose, and uh, what we stand for, our core values. And we, we, we dealt with the purpose last week, defining our purpose, and today is clarifying our core values. The other two is direction, which we'll get into in, in future episodes. Where are we going? What does it look like when we're there? How do we get there? And then the last of the three is executing the strategy. How are we going to work the plan? Okay. So today, uh, clarifying core values. Let's start off by defining core values. Uh, my definition, definition of core values is they're essential and enduring beliefs based on key business ideas that provide ongoing guidance for organizational thinking and acting. Essential and enduring beliefs based on key business ideas that provide ongoing guidance for organizational thinking and acting. Uh, let's break that down. Uh, essential. They're essential because that's why they're core. You only want maybe three to five. You want a laundry list of, of values, three to five core values and they, they're, they're enduring, just like when we talked about purpose, it's, it should, it's timeless. Now, not to say they can't be changed, but you're going to live these things. They'll be timeless. They really stem from the leader and the leadership team, uh, but they're enduring, essential enduring, based on key business ideas. This is important. So many times people take a whack at, at values, and it's, it's vanilla. You know, it's we love our customers, and our employees are great. And, you know, that's, that's nothing wrong with that, of course. But that's not going to drive you. Uh, you need to make them uh, based on key business ideas. Uh, and then the other one is ongoing guidance for organizational thinking and actions. It's, uh, the core values are the glue that, that holds an organization together through thick and thin. It's, it serves as a rudder as uh, we think and act and, and go on our way to achieve our direction. Okay. Now, one of the power of core values is that they they serve as the foundation for building a culture. Uh, you may start with thinking about what kind of culture you want and or what kind of culture you want to change into. 
And then you got to look at the, the, the foundation, the bedrock here and what, what will be the values that drive such a culture. You know, for example, if you wanted a culture that's a zero defects manufacturing or customer driven or collaborate, what have you, but what are the business values that would really drive us toward that kind of culture? And then you've got to, of course, have to live it. You need to talk about it and you got to live it as the leader. So, um, let's now we'll move to, uh, uh, an example. I use my business as an example, Wealthy Associates, just to give you an example. I'll give you some others, but let's just start there. My my purpose is to enable organizational leaders and teams build a needed organizational capability to achieve their desired results. We went over this when we talked about purpose. I use it there too. The 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 customer client is the organization leaders and teams, and the value proposition they get out of working together is to help them build the organizational capability to drive wherever they want to drive. Okay. Now, my core values are three. Uh, one is rapid diagnosis. And for core values, you want to have one to three words, and then you want to have an operating definition, just like you talk about, you know, not, not a, a real you know, de- definitive kind. It's Well, definitive, but not uh, uh, pristine and so forth, just as you just be talk about it. So if I talk about what does rapid diagnosis mean, I mean, I work with the decision maker, okay? I want to talk to the person who's going to make the decision and, uh, and uh, well, who, who's going to send the check, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, develop a shared concept of, of, of uh, what we're up to, uh, the needs and the desired outcomes. Uh, then does I, I then need to go home and design an approach and then I put that in the form of a letter of agreement and go back to the decision maker. And uh, they are, can see, as I demonstrate, that I listened to them and I understood them. And then I attached an approach to the objective and the value and the and the success factors that we're trying to achieve. Uh, that's all when I talk about rapid diagnosis. I don't, not a long, drawn out kind of thing. And I work right with the uh, decision maker on that. Practical. Sometimes I have to go out and interview folks and that sort of thing, but uh, mainly it's it's uh, getting on with it. The second of the three is uh, practical solutions. Uh, I, I don't get involved in long term, drawn out kinds of things. Uh, Short term uh, interventions, uh, approach designed around success. And the third of the three is genuine collaboration. The three uh, uh, third uh, core value: uh, genuine collaboration, starting with the letter of agreement I mentioned earlier. And continuing throughout the engagement, I may work with a variety of people, and, and but periodically, if it's not the decision maker that uh, I'm working directly with, I'll circle back, keep that person posted. Uh, see, because it's so important, the, the client needs to uh, own whatever we create. The client needs to be involved. Uh, I go away, uh, and you know, unless they own it, uh, they're probably not going to use it or implement. So it's very important to get the, uh, in my case, the client involved. People tend to own things they help create. But I just give that as an example of my three uh, core values and a little description, an operating definition of each. Uh, we mentioned in purpose, and the same thing is true of uh, of core values, a cascading. In other words, you uh, this, this doesn't apply to a smaller organization, but as you grow in medium and larger organizations, there could be an organizational purpose. And for the line organization, as you have different divisions and regions and that sort of thing, the purpose probably is the same for them. Not the purpose, I'm sorry, the core values, uh, the same would hold true for purpose, core values for uh, for those line organizations. But as you look at staff groups, uh, the, their their core values should be tailored to their, their business needs, okay? Now, they, ha- they need to be consistent with the organization as a whole, but they don't need to repeat them. But they certainly don't need to contradict them, but they have to have their own set of, they have, just like they have to have their own purpose, they have to have their own core values to tailor to their uh, operation. The same would be true of product service divisions uh, that uh, feed into the, to the line. Now let's talk about uh, uh, guidelines for developing your core values. Uh, it starts with the leader starts with uh, the leader of the organization as a whole, or if you're working with an organizational unit, you as the vice president or general manager or whatever your title might be. Because you have to, it has to come from within you and you have to believe in this and you have to live it, okay? 
So it, it really has to start with the leader. And the leader needs to involve their leadership team. So together they have a, a set of shared values here, these core values, because they're going to set the pace. Okay. And you need to talk about it and you need and live it and uh, set an example. The structure is, is simple. I, I mentioned it already. You have a, a core, uh, first you're, you identify your core values, one to, or three to five usually, a uh, word or two. And then an operating definition, as I try to illustrate with mine, uh, for each of the core values. You want to do that in a, in a, a few sentences uh, and how it is manifested as you're doing your organizational work. Use common language and use colloquialism and metaphors. That's, 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 that's fine. In fact, it's encouraged to, uh, to use common language like that to really get the idea across. Uh, let's look at uh, a couple of other examples of uh, core values. Uh, one I'll use is Toyota. You're familiar with Toyota. And again, they have two core values, respect for people and continuous improvement. Now, in their operating definition, I won't go through the whole thing here, but the respect has to do with individuals and customers and that sort of thing. And then the teamwork, uh, the, the very, very they pride themselves and they talk about what they mean in teamwork. So respect for people showing up in respect and in teamwork. And the second continuous improvement, they have three uh, uh, operating different definitions there about the challenge, the challenge of always looking ahead, having a sound strategy like we're talking about, uh, the continuous improvement, always uh, continuing to improve their product services and so forth. And then the idea of uh, go out and look for yourself, go, go right to the source. Those are the, that's part of their operating definition, which I didn't read the whole thing. Let me give you one other. This is a human resource department I worked with some time ago when they were trying to shift to going from just being an administrative group to really being wanting to be a strategic partner with the management of this uh, company. And so they needed to really, they felt, to uh, get to know the business of their clients. And so they had two uh, core values. One is strategic partner. And the other is professionalism. And again, I'm not going to read the whole strategic partner thing, but their operating definition said, we need to get out. We need to get to know our clients. We need to get to know their business. And only with that are we going to be accepted as a partner. And, and, and when we achieve that, we'll be able to design strategies that dovetail with the strategies of our clients. Uh, and that we, that will be successful for everybody. So that's paraphrasing what their operating definition was all about. And professionalism, they said, we've got to keep up. We've got to not only know the business of our clients, but we have to know our own stuff, and we're not going to let our guard down uh, at all. And that's the professionalism. So hopefully those, those uh, examples, my own and then Toyota and the Human Resource Department, uh, can serve as good a good uh, uh, models for you. Uh, and what you want to do again is to uh, define your, or identify your core values in a few words and then and make them alive too, like, you uh, know, illustrated and then have operating definitions, just like you talk about them. Now, the other thing is you got, you have to uh, live uh, your core values. You need to model the way you need to talk the talk and then you need to walk the walk and walk the talk. Okay, model the way uh, by talking the talk and walking the talk. So, so things like how you spend your time, you've got to again model the way and, and the, the look at how you spend your time, and and that's modeling the way. What you focus on, uh, critical incidents can be teaching moments in terms of the value and how it helped you or how you slipped maybe in in one of your values. And it's reinforced through your management systems and your performance management systems and your coaching with people uh, and your uh, clarifying expectations, uh, communicating examples and stories. Stories is a great way about, you know, at a meeting and so forth, you tell a story about how a, a pertinent team uh, had uh, uh, really came through on using a value that uh, uh, reached excellence. And also problem solving and decision making, how the core values fit into that. Okay, so that's what core values. It, it's not soft stuff. It's it's really good business like. It needs to be business like 
way to go about defining the glue that holds your organization uh, together. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. And it's again, it, it's hand in glove with purpose. Purpose again is uh, why we exist and, and core values is what we stand for. And uh, that's your identity. And it, and as I said, it's, it's pretty timeless, but it serves as the foundation to launch off into setting your direction. And we'll start that next time. We're going to have a, a little uh, episode on uh, what I call situation uh, analysis. In other words, uh, a, a methodology, which I'll describe to you on how to go about uh, assessing what is going on in your relevant environment. We start with the external. We work our way from the outside in. Otherwise, it becomes bureaucratic if you go from the inside out. We start with the external environment. What is going on out there? What are the trends and the and the opportunities and challenges? And then we we hone that down. And then we take a look at our organizational capability, uh, our, just how well we set to uh, constructively address these challenges. You put that all together, and and that's the way you define the critical areas of strategic focus. Okay. So we'll go through that next time. It's it's, it's a great, great process, and it needs to proceed uh, setting the direction where you, you go through your vision and then your strategy behind your vision and then your actions. And we'll we'll have an episode on each of those. But those are the four, the, the four parts in the uh, setting the direction. And we'll, again, uh, reinforce those for you. Meantime, have a great week. We'll see you next time.